This is the third video in the series on the track tools inside 12D model. We're going to be looking at importing a rail profile. This can be done in a couple of different ways. You could either import a PDF of the rail, and provided that PDF had vector data stored in it, you can just use that straight away. Alternatively, you'd have to trace over the top of it. The second method to do that would be to import a 12DA file, which is what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go up to the File, Data Import, 12D, 12D Archive. I'm going to go to my user library, which I've got stored as a configuration on this particular job. And I'm going to come down and pick my rail 60 kilogram 12DA file and then pick on the Read button. I then do a swap to my data import view, there is the shape of the rail and if I go and toggle on my grid you will see that the 0, zero is the top riding edge of the rail on the inside edge of the rail profile. This is critical and if you have either imported the data in a different method and or traced over it and your data is not at zero, 0 for that leading edge there, then you'd need to make sure that you put that to zero, 0 and scale the, the size of the rail correctly so that it will be in the right place when you go and extrude these rails along your job. So now that we've read that data in, we can then go and save that away by going from the rail tool, from the plot, rail profiles, create, We're going to come up into here, we're going to type in here the type of rail we want is going to be a UIC60 the height above rail sleeper is going to be 0 0.17 we're going to go across to the load plot string tab we're going to go and pick on the rail profile string select the string that we've just imported accept that and then pick on the load data button what that's done for us is it's given us here a graph xy and radius etc in the table in the diagram here we can see the shape of the rail that's come in there and then we've already had a look at the load plot string Across to the file I.O. We can then go and write that data out if we had done it. We could have read it and directly from there if it was already saved as a profile. And we could then go into here and write that out as a UIC 60 rail. And write that out for use in, in another project if we so wished. Once that's all done, we'll pick on apply and a finish. So now that we've got a rail profile, we're going to go and create a turnout. And the example one that we're going to use here is going to be a 1 in 16 swing nose crossing on a narrow gauge. On my training notes, we've got a bit of geometry for this particular crossing. The geometry dimensions etc would normally be supplied by the manufacturer of the particular turnout set so they will vary dependent upon that manufacturer and these can't be used as standard but these just give us a basic idea of what it's going to look like when we create the turnout and when we actually get around to placing the turnout in a little while you'll notice that the turnout itself is actually going to be placed as a function the beauty of that means that if the alignment is changed horizontally or vertically once the turnout has been positioned all we need to do is rerun the function and that will adjust the position of that turnout horizontally and vertically to create the turnout we're actually going to go either from the main menu option here of create and edit turnout You'll notice that there are four different variations that we can do with our turnouts and those of course are duplicated up here so we've got the turnout read turnout write turnout create edit which we're about to use there and then the place turnout so when we bring up the turnout 
create edit there's our tool we're going to start off by putting in the type of turnout that we want so this is going to be a ng a narrow gauge I'm going to put an underscore in there then we're going to go to 1 in 16 again an underscore s n x underscore conk so we'll be putting it on concrete sleepers the configuration that we're going to have is going to be a basic configuration and then the label that this will appear in our listing as is going to be a one in 16 s n x on conk now that we've filled in the turnout settings type configuration and label we'll go across to the switch design tab on the switch design tab what we're going to put in here is the switch straight length and in this particular instance it's going to be 6.1 meters that's all we're filling in there we'll move across to the crossing design tab in the crossing design tab we're going to go and fill in the use crossing number here so that's going to be a 16 as we're going 1 and 16 once we press enter there you'll notice that down here it's gone and filled in the 1 and 16 and give us the angle of crossing if you want to you can put in instead of using the crossing number you could put in the crossing angle you just need to be aware that if you were entering that that would go in as a degrees minutes and seconds format so three degrees two minutes two seconds not decimal degrees from there we can then go across to the closure design and in here we're going to go and set the gauge this is a narrow gauge so we're coming down and choosing our 1067 the radius of this particular turnout is going to be a 500 meter radius it's got a lead length of 34.624 meters the extra toe length is going to be 2.555 the extra heel length is going to be 14.6 and then we can come down here and choose our UIC 60 rail once we've read all of those in we can go and pick on the apply button here if we then go back to the turnout details there is a diagram of the actual turnout itself as I showed from the training notes over here on the sleeper details it can be quite a challenge to create the sleepers as there's each individual sleepers location and length needs to be put in manually so it's not something you you would do very often you'd set it up once and then run with that particular set once you knew it was correct now I do have an example one in my data set with the training so I'm just going to show you what that looks like I come out here to my turnouts read and I go and read in the example 1 and 16 turnout with concrete sleepers read that in I then go and have a look at my 1 and 16 with sleepers there is the format of the sleepers so you've got the name the type of sleeper it is the material the width, the depth, the offset for the start and finish, etc., and end and so on. And that then is built for each sleeper right the way through the turnout. So as I said, not really a task that you want to do all that often.